really good to stay fresh on because um, the uh, and what I want to do is actually we'll move around the camera and stuff and also record some of the actual documents that we're looking at. Uh, Mark's printing out some other stuff too. Is it is it okay? No. Okay. Um, who are we? Who are we missing? Okay. Well, uh, what about getting Natalia alone and uh, Michelle? They need they need this training too. Casey, can you grab them, please? This part was, we'll start with the hardest one first. <laughs> Red Jack? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're looking at um, we're gonna be looking at a tax return or a, of a borrower that um, he is a partnership in um, <clears throat> do your jumping jacks. You getting tired, brother? You gotta do your jumping jacks. So. Uh, <laughs> So he's a he's a ten percent owner in four businesses, and he's employed at two jobs. So, um, so now you get customer like you're gonna have to know how to read this, and um, you know this one this one's a little bit of a maze. And so, uh, but more sophisticated people have multiple streams of income. Um, and you know my tax return is about 300 pages you know and so you get more you know like Warren Buffett's I think it's 10,000 pages tax return so I mean you think about and you get more and more complex people have more types of incomes and this guy you know he's got he's got a lot of stuff going on but it's important to learn how to read it so that way um, when it comes up you know what to do with it so um, we've kind of broken it down to where we have his, his tax return 
and then we have his W-2s, and then we have something called a K-1. Does everyone know what a K-1 is? K-1? Yeah. Business profit and loss. Yeah, so this is basically showing his percentage of the, the equity of the business that he owns, and um, which he's a 10% owner. Now, if somebody owns 10% of a business, do they have to disclose the, uh, the tax returns mm. of the business? No. Do they own 10%? Yeah. If it's a loss or a gain, yeah, they have to disclose it. So what do you guys think? If somebody owns 10% of a business, do we have to bring in the business tax returns? It's 25. 10%? No. I think it's more than 25. No. It has to be 25%, right? I say no. Okay. Right. So, um, so just Josh, we're going over the income right now. Going over a couple. Of the, yeah. So if somebody owns uh, less than twenty five percent, then we don't actually don't have to disclose the, the business tax returns. And so, um, and being that this guy is involved with uh, four different ventures, there's other people that are owners of the business. He's just we're just um, using his K one, and we see here on the K one. And, and you guys, what we'll do is we'll pass these around. You can come and take a look at these. And um, you'll show you'll, you'll show what his um, proportioned income or losses per that business. Some of the businesses here have profits. Some of the business have losses. Okay. And so um, so it's important that we find out from, from him. And, and a lot of times this is not going to be intuitive when you initially... Um, take the application on the guy that you he's not going to probably if I recall correctly He didn't initially disclose all this to you. No, we had didn't. we had to dig for it a little bit And we, we noticed some things on the tax return. So what I kind of want to do is Talk about like why we how do we know to ask for these things because it's not going to probably be readily come to your mind Oh, let me ask let me ask for your K1s. What's that? so um, What we saw here when he sent us the tax return, um, that he had some he had some capital gains and losses and some business interest, and so um, if you guys want to come over here and just kind of take a look at this, what what, what kind of stemmed all this right here, and so uh, you, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to come and take a look at these things to see what this is. So uh, just leave leave it right here. But if you guys can come around here and look at it, I want to show you kind of what we're looking at. So, see, in the, in the, a lot of times what we see is just is just this right here on the tax return, and it shows his income is eighty thousand, and it shows he has a business, uh, he has rental, real estate, or Schedule E partnerships of thirty five thousand in profit, and then he has a capital gain loss, and it shows his his net income is one hundred fourteen thousand. Okay. So when we, when we dig through the tax return, everyone's always asking me, well, what do you look at, when, Angelo, when you're looking at that? What are you looking for? The first thing we'll always look at is the first page of a tax return, right? Always want to look at the first page. Um, here, there's not really anything I, I care about right here. So the second page is not really anything that's a, that's a major concern. We do want to look at, okay, if he, how much taxes are withheld or how much he paid. Um, if you see a, um, sometimes if you see that there's a tax liability and you want to find out if he's actually paying the, if he is actually paying the taxes, because a lot of times in high, high income earners, um, if they're not writing off a lot of stuff, they're going to have a tax liability and you need to find out if, see if that's, if they're in a payment plan, because that's going to go into the debt ratio. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they're not going to disclose that to you. It doesn't show up on the credit report. So if you see someone that's making, you know, six figures, um, and it shows here that you know that they either um, that they paid in. You may want to ask, do you owe any money to the IRS? Are you making a payment to the IRS? Are you in a payment plan? Because if let's say their payment plan is five hundred dollars a month, that has to go into the debt ratio, and that's not it's not anywhere that's going to be disclosed to you anywhere. Like you're not going to see that. You see, and I've seen many deals get killed because we find out that they have a payment to the IRS, and it doesn't show up on the credit report. You see. So you need to you need to ask always ask about that you know it's always a good question to ask and it's it's one of your um, uh, one of your uh, data finding questions is do you have a payment plan to the, anything to the government that you owe and so um, so I really don't really look at anything here except for that um, and then um, but how how we start to find out about this guy um, there's not really anything here that that's that's a concern. 
Um, it's just interest in ordinary dividends. There's not anything with any income or anything significant. So I'm not looking at anything right there. I'm not looking at anything here. There's nothing there. Uh, now we're starting to see, okay, it says capital gains and losses. So it shows here that he had a loss from something um, of negative 1383. So this needs to be factored in in an adjustment to his gross earnings, this negative 1383. So um, it's, it's, it's minor, but it just needs to, be, needs to be factored in because it's a loss. See, it shows a loss. It's in parentheses and it shows negative. That needs to be, that needs to be factored in. So, but here's, here's what we see right here, okay? Under um, partnerships or S corporations, look at these businesses that are listed right here, okay? And it tells you what is it's P for partnership, S for corporation, S corporation, and then it has the um, the tax ID numbers, and so it's telling you right here that he's deriving some income or something um, off of these businesses right here, okay? Um, and it's telling you what the total amount of the incomes are, um, and or if there's a loss, okay? And none of those are real estate. Those, huh? are, all, those are all businesses, not real estate. Right. These are businesses. Yeah. So you see, it says. And I'm a, I don't know how to pronounce this. Lost LLC, Whole Long LLC, Manslaw Hospitality, Urinal Hospitality. So um, these are these are businesses that he's involved with. So when you see something like this on a tax return, that's when you need to start thinking. I need to ask for K1 to see. Okay, hey Jack, um, hey, I'm just curious. I mean, how much percentage of this business do you own? You know, and so because that's going to tell you right there. I need I need to dig deeper into this. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna write something up, a guide for everybody. So if you see S I'll, mm -hmm. I'll tell you exactly what to look for, what questions to ask. Yeah, yeah. you don't know, go over eleven twenty S. Yeah, we that. actually that's we a, do. That's the K one, right? Yeah, we do that's have part of the. That's part of the K one. Was all that factored into the initial one hundred fourteen thousand a year? He makes? Yes. Okay. Yeah, but the thing is that Some there's layers. there's there's certain things that need to be um, accounted for because it is factored into the to the uh, summary in the front. Um, like so, you look at here. It says thirty-five thousand three five, or five two six, um, is the income or loss. That's that's the income is thirty-five thousand. And so uh, when we go back here, it's right here, mm -hmm. right. So it shows here um, under the partnerships thirty-five thousand five two six, but it goes a little bit deeper than that because the businesses, um, if I recall, actually had some of them had losses, and and what you have to do is if it had a loss, you have to hit him with a full loss. And so, um, and that's not disclosed here, so that's another kind of thing that's kind of, you know, behind the, the curtain. of his ownership. Yeah, so that's the thing is that that's, that's a behind the curtain type thing because underwriter isn't gonna give him credit for this income because some of these businesses have had losses. So so it's not intuitive to you to, to, to see that. Is this the accumulation of all these though? Should, I mean, if he had yeah. maybe a loss in two, maybe he had, major gain than the other and this is a positive number but we still have to get the the losses if it's accumulatively a positive number yeah yeah that, that's that's true but um this guy um so what joe's saying is that and so some of the businesses had losses some of the businesses had profits right so and the net the net of everything is shown that it's thirty five thousand five two six. but um this uh, this customer, um, to your average, you change it. You got to take this business. Yeah, but the um, to your average. Your to your today. That's why Danny's so and, smart. And these are these are the K <laughs> these are the K ones right here, and it'll show you these are the four businesses. See what it says, Schedule K one, and it shows right here the percentage that the customer or the the guy owns. Mm -hmm. And so it's the beginning and the ending is 10%, right? And it shows what the business did as far as uh, sales and um, what the, um, the ending capital. And basically, now this percentage right here is for that partner or that this particular customer, or I'm sorry, this borrower's uh, equity in the business, what, what applies to him. So it's saying that this whole long LLC, his what's <clears throat> passed on to him is a loss of negative eighteen thousand four one nine. Okay. For that business. For that business. For that business. For that business. Yeah. But that business wouldn't necessarily affect the one of the other three that he has. 
Now this is a negative as well, but these two are positives, and apparently it offsets it somehow. Is that what we're seeing? Well, yeah. So that's that's what it's that's what it's showing here is that um, you know the at the end of the day. Um, was there a worksheet done on this one? I don't know. Did, did you do a yeah, worksheet? Okay. I didn't do a worksheet. Okay, I, just, I just said, hey, Angelo and possible. Josh, come help me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, this, <laughs> this number here is these numbers <laughs> added together. <laughs> I don't know what I was looking at. <laughs> no, it's not. This is a negative 22. I thought it was a difference. Okay. See, that's, that's a perfect example. I mean, you, that, that's impossible unless you're... These two all set one another. Yeah. More investment. Yeah. I'm saying that these don't No, so let me let me explain to you. Yeah, I mean, I because I've been doing this a while, I knew what to do, but but yes, you're going to need to do the worksheet that Mark's talking about. What I want you guys to do is just take a look at add up the losses and add up the gains and see if it equals this number. It doesn't. So what does that mean? He's not telling you There's something else. There's obviously There's something, something else. else. Yeah. But then you got the two-year average. And well, I know we, know we have the two-year average, stuff. but I mean, I'm just talking about this for right now. So I'm just, I want you guys to see this because what's, what's been shown to your eyes is this. Okay, but you see something different when you look at these. That's what I'm trying to get These at. These right two here. wash each other out. This is positive twenty-two thousand, negative twenty-two thousand. That's negative eighteen thousand and positive twenty-five thousand. That's a, a should be seven thousand dollars net. Okay, so this is this is how what you need to do is we're gonna add up all the revenues, the nets, profits here. So that's forty-seven k. You guys see that twenty-five plus twenty-two is forty-seven. Mm -hmm. So forty-seven minus forty is uh, how much? Seven. So, so you can only give them credit for seven thousand of income. <clears throat> He doesn't There's have thirty-five thousand. What, what allowed him to put that number instead? Of the because he had he had a he had a carryover. He had, right okay. he, had he had some uh, some passive income he was allowed to carry over, okay. and so. Um, but With depreciation and all that playing that as well. If he had, it, it can, it can, yeah, it can. That's, but I mean, that's the the, the thing is that we can't we can't <laughs> see those tax returns because he hasn't disclosed them because he doesn't have to. So this is this is what we have to go off of is this right here. And so the thing is that a lot of rookie loan officers, they just look at this and say, I'm going to pre-approve him for one, with 114 income. Okay. So this, this happens a lot. So, but I, w I want you guys to, to really start to see like the, the ripple effects of your decisions. Because let's say that you pre-approve him and then he goes under contract for a house with ratios that are in accordance with this income. And then now the deal bust, right? So you you lost a sale and you lost any future referrals <coughs> off of that customer and it hurts your it hurts the reputation of the company because it makes it look like you don't know what you're doing. So in in the end it hurts your income. So in in our business is this is why it's so important and even for me as as because my in my nature I I'm always a big a big thinker and as to go this deep into something it hurt my brain to begin a little bit you know. And so, because I'm not used to going so deep into one little thing, I always had people do that for me, you know? And so, because my mind always wants to see like very, very big, big things. And so I had to train myself on how to stop and slow down and just, you know, really focus in on, on these, these, uh, these details because it happened to me so many times where I made these mistakes and overlooked these things. But then everybody pays too. Because yeah. the, the slowdown that it causes, you have two or three of those at one time, everybody's loan suffers. Well, and then the thing is that once you, the whole once you get, once you see this a lot, then you're going to get faster and faster at yeah. picking it up. But yeah, you. I mean, if you guys want to step in and take a look at, it, I want you guys to kind of step in and see what we're what we're looking so at. So these are write-offs that he the was able to add into it. Is, is overwhelming, but when you first look at it, but after you do it two or three times, it's just, just like a snap. What we're talking about here, guys, is that see right here it shows that the business is making thirty-five thousand, but if you analyze the K ones, he's only made seven thousand. So you have to take the difference from that and then just subtract it from his total down here? Well, you're just going to give him credit for this. You're not going to even give him credit for that. You're going to give him credit for 7000 Yeah, for only 7000 exactly. So, so he That's what I'm saying. You take the 7000 minus from that and then take the difference from the end. Well, what well, you're going to do is give him credit for his base pay. Right. So we haven't even talked about it. This guy has two jobs, too, guys. Uh, we're just talking about his business income right now. So yeah, you're, 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 you're going to have to subtract the K1. Yeah, so if, let's say it's 7000 in total here. Take that away from that, and the difference of that, no, don't, don't take anything that. away from there. For, forget about this number. Okay? Well, yeah, right. What yeah. I'm saying so, is like you can minus it from that, and it would be the same thing as saying it's only $7,000, because you have to take away um, whatever 35 minus 7000 is from that. 
No, you're not. You're not. You can't give him credit for the thirty-five. Well, right. That's what I'm saying. You. Are you saying you're yeah. going to subtract the twenty-eight Thank from you. here? Oh, subtract the twenty-eight. Exactly. Oh, you, I thought your point no, you is this. subtract the seven thousand from here, and then whatever you have left there, you did subtract it from that. So yeah, he's still waiting. Yeah, he's just looking at it as the difference between the two, and whatever. <laughs> and is and is whatever the difference is. So it works. It's just my way of doing it. Oh, no, you, it's no, correct. No, it's correct. No, you did that last Maybe night with that something, man. What did you do that with? That was no. Like, it was. It was. It was. It was trip, no, it was trying to figure. <laughs> no, I'm correct here. It's just over there. I, I promise you, I'm correct here. And over there, it was because I wanted to know exactly yeah, how to no, do it fine. myself. Yeah, yeah, that's that, yeah, that's good. I mean, as, as it's long a as different you, view. That's of the thing, way yeah. we learned. Yeah, as long as perspectives are okay at times. Yeah, yeah, as long as you got the right number. I was exactly. We're not saying it's wrong. You just took it long, right? It was like one extra. That was real quick. Instead of putting seven and adding everything together. He's just saying take the difference and subtract the 28 from there. Well, thank you. But the thank you. Someone, looking at <laughs> someone thinks like that. There's, there's a whole lot more to it than that. You're just only scratching the surface. That's okay. So that's fine as long as you get to the number. By, the, my point is that as long the right as, number. Yeah. The right number, and then and then and then using the right income to properly qualify the borrower. That's really the main thing, and and, and it's not just on the loan officer. The LOA needs to be able to see this too, and be able to pick this up. Well, see what the loan officers, what was the train of thought? How to get that number? Instead of them having to go through all that again within okay. two or three hours. Yeah. Or yeah. maybe having but, to go But but the thing is, or, you know, you don't want as far as your um, a lot of people they're very intimidated by looking at tax returns. Um, and they don't know how to understand how to read them. And so that's why I want to pick this harder one first so that way you know you can get used to it and and so when we look at the other ones are going to be easier to look at. So um, now also this guy has two W2s right here. We see that he has a base base wages of 80,000. So he has these two W2s. This guy works at two companies too. Um, he works at which is interesting where he's a 10% owner. He also works there too, and he's making sixty nine thousand nine ninety nine, um, seventy k, um, on this job, and then he makes exactly ten thousand at this other hospital. So um, now, with the, obviously with W two wages, we can we can use those. Mm -hmm. It's very straightforward. It's easy to easy to look at that. Um, so, but he's been at both of those jobs for at least two years. Yes. Yeah, yeah. he has been. That's so. Be a hotel. At the at the end of the day, um, I just want you guys to, to take a look at this and give me a number. What is what is his what is his monthly income? Can you guys tell me. So based on based on what the information you've been given here, what would be his monthly income? What was his bottom line? Ninety-two. Ninety-two. So he's got he's got the eighty thousand in the wages. He's got a loss of a capital gain of thirteen eighty-three, and and. He has this right here, and then we see what what we have here. So, what would be his monthly income? It'd be like 72, 72, 49. What are you telling me? Um, I'm just looking up to see if this is actually a hospital. I think oh, no, 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 no. 87,000. Yeah. Is the answer to this question? Sure. Yes, you gotta try to figure out how I got $240,000 worth. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a hotel. That's my, what it must be. <laughs> I used to work in hotels. So. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I was like, I was like, I was like, when you said by two, I was like, I'm a girl, a girl. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, see, President Jagdish Kaple. No, it's not going to be just that because also this guy's double dipping. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So, what do we, what do we end up here with for qualifying? We see that he's got the eighty thousand on the base income. Um, and I understand we don't. We're not looking at twenty fourteen. We're not looking at twenty sixteen year to date. But just, just with this information given, what would you, what would you guys think about a, a, a monthly income for, for him? And then we have a number. Whatever Danny says. Seventy two forty nine. I said seventy two forty nine. So okay. Let's take a look. So we end up having. We saw. We we all agree that the, the seven thousand. Was the annual adjusted <coughs> partnership income, and then he has this 1383 monthly, um, so that comes out to 110 dollars of loss. Um, so oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't count. Yeah. So you have this right here. 
Because that's what you got. 86 divided by 12. 86,000 divided by 12. But the good thing is, everybody was close enough that it, it wouldn't have been a deal killer. So now let's look at let's look at it the other way. That if we would have sort of calculated off the 114. The 114 is how much divided by 12? That's uh, 9,000, 10,000. Right. 9,000. It's 9,512. So, so what's, look at the difference between 7,150 and 9,500. So here, if you had a 40% housing, you can go up to $2,800 house annual, which is about 350 house. Here, you can go up to uh, $3,800 house payments, about a 450 house. So if you give a pre-approval to the guy here for 450, and his income is really this, what happens? He doesn't yeah, qualify. It's not going to go through. Look at that. That's a huge. That's a huge swing. You know. So, <laughs> that's a 30% difference in income. So it's just real important to look at this because this is how just a simple oversight what could cost you a deal when we're not we're not looking at something the right way. And so um, and I'm I'm you know more guilty of that than anyone. But I you know the thing about you guys being successful is reducing the error rate know the time that it takes you to learn this stuff and so you can learn the long way and run it to yourself and lose a lot of loans uh, we can or we can just learn this now and not let it happen it's a comfort suite you know and so um, so that's that's this is a good one on this on this uh, anyone have any questions about now let's say that the guy had one of the businesses he owned 25% you would have to bring in. then we have, have to do what we have to bring in bring in the tax returns of that business mm -hmm. You see, so more and more um, uh, I know. it just keeps expanding, getting more and more complicated, and more. Yeah, it, it can making. be. It can be. Yeah, there could be a call for more things, and so. But um, hey, that means the guy must be taking out a good loan. Yeah, he got a pre-approved for three something. Three forty. That's gonna be nice. <laughs> um, so. Uh, anyway, that's. That's something that it, it, this does happen every once in a while. You get a loan like this that has it has um, you know uh, a few steps in it, and obviously before you pre-approve them, <coughs> you know a manager needs to take a look at it to make sure that it's done it's done correctly. So um, I know you had some you had some examples that you want to share. Yeah, just two. Okay, two quick okay. Let's let's talk about what you have. These are a little more. You, you want to come over here? Yeah. So. Huh? Yeah, you can work in there. <laughs> Thank you. Man. you stay with me. <coughs> yeah. Come on, camera man. If um, whoever's loan this is, I mean, it doesn't matter. I just, I just grabbed it because it's a really good example. And then the same thing with this one. Um, check, check those or tax return. Yeah, just go with the go to the tax return. Okay. Go on, the, just on the on the surface, this return looks. Clean. Very, very clean. And there's two years in here. So he's one. got a W 2 income of 52,986. Oh, two years? Yeah, well, yeah, there's two years of that, and it's, it's oh, pretty, okay, okay, uh, okay. it's pretty, uh, oh, yeah, consistent. Two years, we have two years of tax return. Got it, got it, got it. So you, it's in, and it's inclining, and he's W 2 uh, hourly. But when you go with. No, and this is, this is a regular tax return guy, so look again, right here, what we're going to look at is I want to look at the first page, right? I want to see what's on the first page. Just okay, now to. this page right here, again, I'm not really, these, these, I'm not really, I don't really yeah, care about these. There's nothing on there that you know? I was so, looking. The first page um, I may look and see like if it says how much he owed. Let's say that. Um, you see what he did. So let me see what he, so these are your total, these are your total payments. So it looks like it says here that. He got a, he got a refund. Of 7708. 3530. Oh, let me see. Uh, yeah. yeah, he overpaid. So he's getting money back of 3530. I'll show you why. <laughs> okay. So that the one thing you hear is hold on, before we go to that, I want to say this. If somebody's making 50, 80, 100 <laughs> and they're getting a refund, mm. you should start thinking about that. Right off. 
you should start thinking about that. There's, there's something. So, I mean, you just make a habit of looking at every page of the federal. When you get down to where you're a state and all those, you know, those goofy forms, I wouldn't, you could probably stop. But on this one, when you get to page four, or page four or five, um, this is the probably the most deadly form because it doesn't show up on the first page. It's a 2106. Unreimbursed business expense. And it's uh, probably the uh, most misused form of all of them. It's, it's what got this guy this refund. But they don't understand that when they do this for two years, they may have uh, deducted themselves out of a house. And um, and it's a big surprise to them. And uh, you, got to, you have to explain it right. In this case, the loan, the loan works. But um, it, it could have been a killer because that was a lot of money off their off their annual in, uh, monthly income. It's like a write off or a return. This is a write off of s almost seventeen thousand dollars for the year. So over thousand dollars a month went off of his. That reduces his his, uh, his gross. Did you know? We always ask if they do write offs. And um, so they got a twenty one hundred six. You got Schedule C. Mm -hmm. and these are just basic stuff. Well, Schedule C for a ten ninety nine employee. Yeah. The thing is that you can ask them that, but a lot of people don't even know what this is. They have they have a tax yeah. repair, yeah. and the tax guy does it. Or even so turbo they, don't, they, don't, they don't know they don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, a lot of times there's not like some people do. So this guy kind of made a mistake or didn't make well, yeah, a mistake. Yeah, he, yeah. Yeah. Just, that, 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 they just don't know what the effect yeah. of it is. A mistake for getting house. <laughs> right, but it's I mean, but it's but it's our job when the when the tax. I mean, I've been t I've been kind of going around to everybody. You know, when you get a tax return, what's the first thing you look at? Well, usually I'm getting. Other answers besides uh, look for 2106, Schedule C, Schedule E, but that should be the first thing you look for. You look look for what's gonna what's gonna knock you out. Look for the problems, and then the go back and, and calculate what you know what you've determined that's a fact. And so the Schedule C, 2106, and the Schedule E are the three most common common uh, schedules besides you know S corp and all that. So that's and then the same thing for 14. You did the same thing. So when I averaged the 2106s together, and then took his uh, current his current income because he's a W-2 employee, um, I think the loan still worked, but probably well, had to change. Let's, let's go through the math for a second. So, so his 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 income here was 53, and he had 17,000 in, in unreimbursed. So what's his new income? 73 divided by 12. Uh, 36. 36. So, so mm -hmm. he now, now he, he makes three grand a month. Yeah. So he doesn't make well, forty seven hundred a month anymore. He makes three grand. Three grand. So now now is this there's there's a few things. Um, you know, a couple things that we can do. We're at the end of the year. So if he files a twenty sixteen return with no unreimbursed, then then we don't have to hit him with that. The letter letter from the company saying they pay any expenses. He gets a little I mean I could have people uh, amend the return. But mm -hmm. before the loan applications started, yeah, I did that. Did this one? That. And then they, you know, they pay six, seven thousand dollars, but they still get the house. Did this one work well, because it was a reimbursal, or because he, he was just <laughs> loaning out? Well, maybe amount. he got reimbursed and he just didn't report the reimbursement. Uh, okay. That would have even so it some of it out. Right off? It would have uh, leveled some of it out. I mean, yeah. if he if he had seventeen thousand dollars in expenses, yeah, but his company reimbursed him for fifteen. But he just didn't report it. Yeah. But here's a question, hypothetical. If it happened in 2015, but not in 2016, so he goes and and files taxes in 2000 or 2016 next month, and doesn't report any unreimbursed expenses, then even the the one he did in 2015 is not going to be calculated in, right? Yeah. No, it won't. Right. But you would, if it's the same company. If then, it's the, if he does something, all things being equal, he's with the same company. But this year he doesn't. He didn't take any kind of you know. Um, unreimbursed expenses. It was a one-time thing. Yeah. Okay. If it's the same company, you could do it. If it's the same company, they, I mean, I had a situation like this. The underwriter wanted a letter stating that the company was paying his expenses now. Yeah, you're, you're gonna need something from the company showing that. So that uh, it doesn't have to be factored in averaged out. Is what I'm asking. Right. It right. does not have possibly. Let's say let's say he got a promotion and he's in a different position. Yeah. Now. You know, and he's in, you know like let's say that you know before he was in the field and now he's in management. Right. Okay. So something like that, or um, you know, they got bought out. The new company pays all their expenses. You know, I mean, give them a company truck. But it's yeah. got to be a change. It can't just be like just decided. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what they're looking well, for. Most likely, yeah. I mean, for the to 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 have a compelling um, argument on that to make sure that it, it looks legitimate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, it would need to be something like okay. The ones I've done has been there's been a promotion, or there's been a buyout of the company, and something's changed. 
and it's allowed that to allow that to happen. So we could omit the unreimbursed. Um, if we took a class, you know. Yeah, I mean, whatever the situation. Be, I mean, you know, it was a one-time thing. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So Not a reoccurring thing. Just yeah. One. Right. Right. So, but you know, um, it, it is what it is, guys. I mean, they look at this stuff. Before you didn't need to. Now there are programs that don't look at this stuff. You know, you can do just W twos only, but it's it's more money down. And more you know, or money. higher interest rates. Higher interest, higher interest rates. rates. So, um, so lower LTV. Huh? No, there there are there are, there are other programs. I mean, th these conforming programs, yeah, they're they're great. But sometimes some people, you know, they don't fit the box. That's not so. what the bank statement. Is. Bank statement, w there's also a W-2 only program, but it's more money down, higher rates. And so there's a non-disclosure loan, but it's more money down, higher rates. And a lot of people uh, will go with that. Some people won't. And it just depends. I mean, so um, what we're talking about right now is just conforming loans. And so um, and government loans. And if the loan officer will, will catch 90% of it, and then the LOA is going to probably catch the rest, um, the, the loan officer should be able to head, head this off before a contract comes. Yeah, oh, for sure, <coughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah, don't rely on your LOA to catch it. That's, so that's saying dangerous. Some, some write-offs can be so, reimbursals that were that. incorrectly put on. <laughs> yeah, they could, it could have been re incorrectly. <laughs> then, um, <laughs> check stubs. <laughs> what? Check stubs. Yeah, check stubs. Yeah, so we have some, this is uh, one, one thing. <laughs> <laughs> what? I said we're we tired. Just how much, much tired we can <laughs> to get in the field too, so he can uh, he can catch. He already it. left. I <laughs> can't left. count him. I'm tired. Take a look at that for me. <laughs> My eyes hurt. Uh, uh, this, this is on, on check stubs. Um, you got a W two employee, and I ask I ask everybody what um, what's the first thing you look at. They're they're saying hours, their salary, all those you know, all the obvious things, but I think you can try to train yourself. Child support. Heck yeah. Well, any kind, any kind of deduction. Well, there's, there's, there's positive and negative clues that you can get on here that would indicate you need to ask some questions before you go really any further. And um, one of them is child support. This right here says $200. $200. Um, it was recorded on the 10, 1003 as $200 a month. But this, this guy's paid by the week. And on the credit report, it said $200 a month. But this guy gets paid by the week, and I looked at every check stub, and they're hitting him every single week, $200, $200. That's um, $870 a month. Well, but let's take a look at that, though. So this this is something that may may not show up on the credit report. But it did, but it did. It was like it even, more, like even more powerful. Yeah, it could. But, yeah, sometimes yeah, if it does show up, uh, here's my rule of thumb. If I ever see child support on credit, mm -hmm. I'm always digging deeper and finding out, hey, man, are you still paying this? And in their head, they may think, well, um, you know uh, that they're not paying it because it's about to um, either be uh, complete or uh, that they, they they were in arrears and now they're caught up. But if they're still paying it monthly, you have to put that into the debt ratio. And so, um, so you the thing that you want to do, and we always talk about this. You know, you, whatever the customer is going to tell you, trust them, but you have to verify it with documents. You know, it does, it's not their job it, to know yeah, the guidelines. Yeah, they don't they don't understand what the rules are. We we're supposed to understand the rules. So let's say that they tell you. Hey man, hey Mark, I already I paid off my child support. In his head, he may be thinking I paid off my arrears, because he he could have been in arrears, but he still pays the monthly payment. So you say, okay, no problem, I'm pre approve you for that because you told me you paid it off. Well, let me let me see what you're talking about. You know, let me see what you let me see what you have. I agree with you and I and I believe you, but I have to see it. You see, it doesn't matter what he's telling you. It's trust but verify. Yeah, you always assume yeah. they're lying. <clears throat> well, it's not that they're. No, I won't say that they're lying. Don't don't assume the customer's well, not lying. Outwardly. Yeah, you want to give the customer the <laughs> benefit of the doubt. Um, you always want to be on the customer side. Of course, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that they don't understand like some of these intricacies, and that's not like if you go walk into their business, we don't know what they do. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we have to see it from their side to see what how do they how are they looking at this? Mm -hmm. You know. But it, so but it goes back to our training that capstone. If you can't prove it. You can't use it. Everything has to have acceptable documentation. Yeah. Well, because they don't know a lot of stuff, man, with taxes. And no. Well, and yeah. you can't expect Sometimes them to know that. Know I mean, they you know, they so you can't. I mean, it's it's hard for some people that they're not in this in, they're not in this area. Um, you know, that's you know that's our area. We're supposed to know that. YTD, so. baby. YTD. Um, Will they include four hundred one k loans? I'm not some type of Okay, that's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to. You. So you got you got you got the negative things that are gonna take away from their monthly income, or yeah. 
like on this one, for example, there was a loan. I, have I mean, if you dig, gotta dig deep, there's a loan on here. And I looked at the year to date, $250 a week. And he had made only three payments. A 401k loan? Doesn't say. But you need to ask a question. And it turns. It's a 401k loan to, to buy a house. Not always. It was a 401k? That's okay. what it is. Mm -hmm. but, but the question That's should be asked, it could have been, yeah. it could have been a car he bought and had it payroll deducted from the credit union with this company. That's right. And the post office does that. <laughs> and um, well, <laughs> the post office does that. You mean the the postal credit union? You buy a car, you get a five percent discount for having an auto draft, mm -hmm. and that that could have been something like that. And it was brand new. I could tell you only made three payments. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that question had to be asked. That was a thousand dollars a month that could have come off as a off of his um, monthly income. Yeah, <laughs> and then then the four hundred one k or you know the retirement. A four hundred one k is your safety net, y'all. It's um. That's that's what you you know you want to throw it in there as a, as an asset, but it could also be something that's giving you reserves that you need that you find out later on that you need. And go ahead if you see it, go ahead and get the documents for it because then when it gets past the LOA into processing, you want them to say, okay, the underwriter says I need six months reserves, and then you got to go scramble five days to get these docs. Well, I think I think all of us now ask for that up front, whether they're going to use it or not. Terms and conditions have quarterly statement. Just get it, cause it's gonna save your butt. And um, I mean, I, I I know it's happened with me a lot, but until I got here four weeks ago and started looking at so many at a time, over and over and over, I started to realize, wait a minute, okay, where's the backups? And talking to some of you, I started to realize, well, why not? It could be three weeks after you pre-approve somebody until they find the house, and and you got the loan in your hands all that time. The LOA doesn't even know this person exists, possibly. And um, why not go ahead and just ask for this stuff and get it out of the way and go ahead and just throw a little label on it so the LOA will know what's going on and, um, and that could save 10 days down the road. 10 to, at least, you know, seven to 10 days for sure if it turns out it's needed. But what else to see? No, we're intra bank statements does it for every 401k though. Depends on if you have an intra bank statement, if you're only on quarterly statements, if you take interim, sometimes they come through two weeks for just the company to give it back to us. Let's see, let's see there. So what are you saying to ask for earlier? Yeah, if they have a 401k and stuff like that, ask for it because I, uh, I know like three or four 401ks, customers sometimes don't even switch a 401k, switch this and this, and switch it to another kind of account, purchase it, change it into another one, change it into a savings account. Mm -hmm. And then at certain times like that, they're not gonna get an interest statement because they could have done something in the, time, in the time frame that you don't you have. have to. And then you have to find a 401k company just to get it. And mm -hmm. the 401k company, you have to go send out the scores and everything all over advance. again to the 401k company okay. before they give you everything. Okay. That school takes school. Time. Yeah, yeah, waste time. Out, yeah. Borrowed money from one of my previous employees. So yeah, should we add that up right? And that's yeah. how it showed up on oh, my yeah. paycheck. Is it that pop? So yeah. actual yeah. quarterly and the interim? Well, does that the takeaway? Are you saying ask for both quarterly and interim? Um, if you have a uh, quarterly that shows enough balance inside of it, yes. If they haven't taken enough in, if they have a quarterly that has enough money inside of it, then you're good. If you're going to go for interim, is just in case they don't have money inside of it enough and they're still putting more money into it, because it's a uh, 401k is going to come directly out of your paycheck. So if they don't have enough in their 401k, they're going to they're going to use it against them. They only use uh, sixty percent of it uh, because there's also the withdrawal fees and everything. Yeah, like this that. is so going to money out against it. took out. Okay, there's going to be a lot of factors into it, so you have to get the statement. That's an easy explanation, but go ahead and just cover the base. Go ahead and get the information, get the loan loan agreement, stick it into the file, because the underwriter's going to want it. Um, so you I mean, so you listen to Andrew, you can, y'all can tell that right right away, up to two weeks, it could have saved the loan if it turned out it was needed. Yeah. Hmm. Um, anyway, so, you know, again, what we're talking about here is just the, the, the main thing is just paying attention, you know, paying attention to the details. Um, it's like if you went into this, have any of you guys ever been to surgery before, been into surgery? Mm -hmm. And if the doctor was just real sloppy and, you know, he's supposed to Actually, cut you here, he cut you over here. I mean, you know, no, no, no. I was, I was afraid of them. So, but no, I'm just saying that, I mean, that's what basically, theoretically, what we're talking about is, okay, you pre-approve the guy for 450, he only qualifies for 300. You know, that's almost like the equivalent. You know, it's like, why are we, Surgery. Surgery. why are we, you know, you know, so, um, you know, that, but that's how, that's, that's how people are going to look at you. Like, you don't, you know, you don't know what's going on. Does anybody so. have an, an argument why you wouldn't want to do some of these things? I don't want to make money. <laughs> I hate money. No, I mean, seriously, is there, is there, because, of, because I haven't seen very much of this, uh, 
proactiveness, if that's a word. Um, well, I think I think that that type of stuff needs to be done up front. Um, and, and if I think most of us are intelligent enough if taught how to really do that, if they do those type of things fully, like the worksheet that's just now being introduced to some of us. If we actually master that, and I think I think we can knock all that out even before we finally pre-approve somebody. Exactly. You know I mean? As opposed to like with one of my, I got a contract in now, and we still gotta go break down everything because we, I mean, it looks good, but we still just need to make sure that everything is verified and on point, you know? So I think if, if we have a solid training on how to really look at that like, we, like we're doing now, I don't think we have any issues going forward. And tomorrow we're gonna do another income training. We're gonna we're gonna finish this one because I don't want them to go too long because I, I know that the attention span is hard for all of us. So. Well, yeah, because this is I mean this we only scratched the surface. I mean, as we're working together, um, you know, I'll I'll spend as much time until I see the light go on because it's for me it's that important. Um, I mean, it can be a sales point, honestly, that we are so particular because so many other people aren't. And that if you are that particular, you want to explain that to them. Be like, I'm being this particular because I want you to close this loan. All right, but especially if they've already well, they've already been declined somewhere else. Let's let's talk about that. Last night we did a um, a secret shopper with Quicken. We <laughs> recorded the call, and um, you know it seemed that like from what I listened to with them that they weren't thorough. You know, and 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 explains probably why a lot of their loans get denied or they don't go through, and that we pluck a lot of loans from them. That's, that's an easy snipe shot. Right there. You can you can go into someone and be like, hey, you know what? If, if you hear someone shopping around, you can just be like, okay, um, I'm assuming you're going to try Quick and Loan some here, somewhere or another because they're, well, they're everywhere. The credit report, but let me you? tell you something. When you go on the phone with Quick and Loans, tell me what you see, and I'm going to tell you what I see. They're just going to ask you to get on an application, and you, you can tell me if I'm right or wrong after you try it, if you're really going to do that. But where I'm trying to help you beforehand. We can take an application afterwards after we see if something's actually feasible here, mm -hmm. but they're just going to try to get your credit pool. Right, and at the end of the day, I mean, you want you want to get into your house and make sure you close, or do you want to? Because here's, here's what's going to happen, guys. That that or what could happen is that that you think that you're pre-approved, and then you get all the way to closing, and then you get denied. You get the rug pulled from you. Now you that's clicking. Home. So you know, would you rather you know be smart, make the right decision, or uh, make a mistake and lose your house? I got one last night. You know, me. we had it happen to him last night with the deal with Quicken. So it's quick. And the guy said. Uh, I spent 40, 45 minutes with him, and I uncovered I, I, I uncovered everything that Quicken uncovered in three weeks after they had already gone under contract, ordered an appraisal, had an inspection, closing date, signed disclosures, everything. The seller had already bought another house. So you look at I mean, all these people are, are affected by it, and then, I mean, we were able to do it, but he's got to do a couple of things, and we did that in less than an hour. And now they can, they're, they're going but, to work down and fixing it. See, and what are we talking about here? We're talking about fact finding. Mm -hmm. Just keep talking and talking and Asking talking. the questions and, and your card on you, that's a huge thing that, we, that they talk about is the fact finding. You've, you've got to ask these questions well, listen to understand. To, listen to what to they're saying. What the guy's telling you. And you'll all come out. If you just ask him the questions, it'll all come out. He'll spill the beans and everything will come out. Um, or, with the, or with the documentation <coughs> that he's giving you, you're going you're gonna to see and that's that's a strong selling point. Hey, we're experts over here. You know that we train on this every single day. I can't wait you know? for somebody to say, "Well, so and so didn't ask me for that." I said, "Well, so and so is going to drop that bomb on you three weeks down the road." I'm I'm, I'm uncovering it now. Let's, now let's fix it. They're pre we can fix it. Are I so pre underwrite. <laughs> Yeah, their pre approvals are so easy to get. It's like, do you want a meal? That's do you want a participation award or do you want the blue ribbon? Do you want to get in your home, or do you want to get a piece of paper that says you almost got? I promise you, if you explain that to the customer and let them visualize that, that they'll never go to Wigan. They have the chance of losing their home. They're gonna, they're gonna think twice about it. So. And um, money that they have to pay to get the whole process started. So. But how many times y'all heard that? Well, so and so didn't ask me to do that, or why am I having to? Why, why do I have to send this in? My realtor said <laughs> I shouldn't have to send that in. <laughs> your realtor? Well, you, yeah, you, well, you're. I can't. I just tell them I'm like, how's it? So you better. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, you know, I mean, you'll hear that the people are in their ear, they're and they're asking all these questions. Well, because I'm trying to avoid you having a lot of heartache later and mm -hmm. causing it for a, a whole lot of other people. It saves everyone time, everyone all around. Yeah. So anyway, it's it's just good to you know fact find get the, get the get the information. So thank you guys so much for attending. Hopefully, hopefully some of it sunk in. So. <laughs> <The mortgage. laughs> yeah, I got a student loan for my country wide mortgage.